Welcome back to the channel, my name is Jack. Now, every year, Apple releases a new iPhone. Like clockwork, it's happened around sort of September time for a good few years now. And we're at a point where each year the differences are becoming smaller and perhaps less noticeable, especially if you're using the previous year's iPhone. But over time, those new features, those improvements, they all add up and I thought it would be kind of interesting to sort of take a bit of a step back and look at how far we've actually come. Now for me, one of the things that I always look forward to with each new phone is the cameras. And that's what I wanna focus on in this video, the evolution of the iPhone camera system. And to ask, like, how much has it improved really? And is there anything that the older cameras do better than the new ones? Now, I don't have every single iPhone. I've owned a bunch of them over the years, starting with the 3G. But the only ones that I still physically have are an old iPhone 6S. It's pretty beat up and the battery lasts about five minutes. My iPhone 10, the first iPhone with that all front display. And of course, my 14 Pro Max, which I've had for just over a month. Three iPhones with three different camera systems. I've been out and about and I've taken some photos for some side-by-side -side comparisons and some indoor shots too, to see how they fare in lower light and in different lighting conditions, with some pretty interesting results, which we'll see. And maybe you're someone who's still using an older phone and you're wondering how the cameras now compare. Now, just for a quick refresh, the iPhone Success, of course, has just one rear camera on the back, and it was in fact the first iPhone to get a 12 megapixel sensor. It has an f2.2 aperture, a five times digital zoom, but there's no ultra wide or telephoto here. Then with the 10, we have a dual camera setup, both 12 megapixels. The main camera has a wider f1.8 aperture for better low light performance and f2.4 for the telephoto, which also gives us that nice 2x optical zoom with an up to 10 times digital zoom. It also has auto HDR for photos, portrait mode with all the portrait lighting effects and 4K video now up to 60 FPS. Then lastly, on the 14 Pro Max, it has a triple camera system, now with a bump up to 48 megapixels on the main camera when shooting in Pro Raw, staying at 12 on the 0.5x ultra wide and the 3x telephoto, which means we get up to a 15 times digital zoom as well. We also do get a 2x on the 14 by using those middle 12 megapixels on the 48 megapixel sensor. It also has the photonic engine and deep fusion for better image quality in mid to low light, smart HDR4, night mode, and HDR video recording with Dolby Vision up to 4K 60fps, just to name a few. So I've taken some photo sets for some comparisons in different lighting conditions, and I want to know your thoughts too, so feel free to let me know in the comments below which images you think are best. So I thought we'd start with a few nice outdoor easy shots with lots of light. This is the main camera on all three phones. We can see how they all give a slightly different look to the same scene, partly because of that different camera hardware, but also because of how the phones are processing the photos after the fact, tweaking them and combining each image with other photos when you press that shutter button. The 6S is slightly darker on the grass in the foreground. The 14 is brighter overall for sure, with the 10 sitting somewhere in between. You can also see how they all handle color slightly differently too. On the 10, the grass and the leaves on the trees have much more of a warmer hue to them and I think that it captures those autumn tones more accurately and in much more of a pleasing way out of all the three phones here. The 14 looks a bit cooler in colour to me, but the sky looks the most vivid. Maybe it's a little bit too blue and saturated, but it was a very bright day and it best matches how it looked to my eyes. But something I do want to point out is the sharpening. This is something that has been getting a lot more aggressive with each new iPhone, to the point where I actually think it's a bit too much. Looking at the tree on the left, the 6S and the 10 look great, but on the 14, the sharpening is so strong, it gives the leaves and branches almost like this white halo effect. It kind of looks a bit fake and overprocessed, and it's something that we'll see in a few other of these scenes that I've shot. Now these are all 12 megapixel photos, but I also want to compare against the 14's new 48 megapixel sensor. So we also shot a 48 megapixel Pro Raw, which you can see here. And this actually fixes the oversharpening that I just mentioned. It looks a lot better and a lot more natural. With those extra megapixels, we can also see the extra detail we get. Cropping in, everything just looks so much sharper with a lot more scope for reframing your images but they are pretty big in size. This one is 97 megabytes versus the four megabyte, 12 megapixel standard image. The 14 also has the 0.5X ultra wide, and this is how that looks in comparison. We get a much wider field of view here. This is how the 2X telephoto and the 2X crop look on the 10 and the 14. 
Again, we can see the oversharpening on the 14 here and the more sort of warmish hues on the 10. And this is how the 3X telephoto compares on the 14, getting us even closer to the ruins that we can see more clearly now off in the distance. In this next set, this is actually a pretty tricky shot for a phone to handle. We're looking at a subject in the distance, but towards the sun. And the 6S, again, is looking a bit dark and dull here. It just doesn't have the dynamic range. The 10 handles the scene a lot better. The grass is brighter, but it does still look a bit washed out in the shadows, especially when compared to the 14, which I think is the winner here. The grass looks as vibrant as it did in real life, and there's also a good contrast between the highlights and the shadows, unlike on the 10. It also isn't going overboard on the sharpening like in the last set. But as we see on all three, there is some pretty big lens flares going on in the bottom right, and that's most prominent on the 14. The sun is blown out in all of these shots, but keep looking at it on the 14, as in the 48 megapixel Pro Raw shot, we'll actually see that there's much less of a harsh spot where the sun is. But again, cropping in, we see so much more detail. The wool on the sheep looks so much finer and fluffier. It almost looks kind of blotchy and noisy on the 6S and the 10. This is the 14's ultra wide. We can see our sheep has a few friends nearby. Here are the 2X zooms on the 10 and the 14. I did clean the lens for these shots, but we do have some light streaking here on the 10. And again, it's looking a bit sort of faded compared to the 14. The sky looks kind of gray on the 10, but it absolutely was blue in real life. Here on the 14's 3X, now it is looking more washed out. I didn't do any tap to focus on these shots, this is just how the phones decided to handle each scene. But the grass is looking a little bit too bright to me here. It's not terrible though, you could tweak it in post for sure to get it looking a bit more balanced. The same goes with the shots on the 6S and the 10 to some degree. And here's a video comparison in some similar lighting conditions. The 10 and the 14 can shoot 4K at 60 FPS, double the frame rate of the 6S, meaning that any motion looks a lot smoother. Although they will all look the same in this video as this is a 30 FPS video. The 6S is definitely struggling with that bright sunlight to keep everything exposed properly. The 10 fares a little better, but the clouds on both are a bit blown out in some parts. The 14 Pro Max, of course, can shoot in 10-bit Dolby Vision HDR, which YouTube doesn't actually support, so I can't show you how that really looks. But watching it back on an HDR display, it just looks so stunning. It's very true to life, and it's clear to see how the video has improved over these generations. Again, though, there's some oversharpening happening here, which is a bit of a trend with the newer iPhones. I do wish that we could tweak it and tone it down a bit. I did take a bunch of photos, so here are a few more sets which I'll put up on screen for you to look at. Let me know how you think each phone compares. In bright outdoor conditions like this, all the cameras do a great job, even the 6S with that tiny camera on the back. The 6, which has the same design as the 6S, was the first iPhone to have a camera bump, and it's kind of funny, I remember how sort of, let's say, controversial it was for the camera to stick out the back of the phone. And now here we are all these years later with three of these huge lenses on the back that get bigger and bigger each year. For the next set, I wanted to look at the minimum focus distances, as this is something that is noticeably worse on the 14. And to change up the lighting conditions, I shot these indoors. The 6S and the 10 fare pretty similarly, but the 14, yeah, well, its nearest focus is almost halfway down the ruler, and that's because of that huge 48 megapixel sensor. One of the drawbacks of bigger sensors is that you lose some of that minimum focus distance, but the 14 does have a macro mode which uses and crops into the ultra-wide camera, and here's how that compares to the others. It gives you back some of that focus distance, but sometimes the ultra-wide can look worse than the main camera, so that is the trade-off. In these examples you're seeing now, I'm holding each phone as close as I can to each subject while still being in focus. You really have to move back more than you sometimes realise with the 14 just to try and get a normal photo of something that's in focus. And that's something that I had to get used to since getting it. But I do love that macro mode. You can get in really close and just look at the detail here on the plant. You can see every single hair. Also, just to note on that first set, look at the difference in the auto white balance. The 6S looks a bit sort of yellowish and green to me. The 10 has a bit of a pinky hue to it, but the 14 looks the most color accurate overall. The backdrop looks gray with no tinting as it should. Here's a set looking at how they compare in mid to bright lighting conditions in the room where I film, and they all handle the scene pretty well for the most part. 
Taking a closer look, I'm not sure if this will come across on a YouTube video, but I am seeing more noise come through on the PS5 controller on the 6S, even with my big studio light on. The wall behind doesn't have as much of a defined texture as the 10 and the 14, but again, the 14 is the most colour accurate here. My lights are at 5200 Kelvin, which is a nice natural white, yet the 6S and the 10 look warmer than the 14. They're also struggling with the blue lamp. The image started to break down a bit on the bright light on the 6S. It looks really grainy compared to the 10. The 14 goes quite heavy in the opposite direction though with the dynamic range. Dulling the lamp down, it almost doesn't even look like a lamp anymore. But I do think it's the most pleasing image overall. We can also see how shallow the depth of field is on the 14's big sensor compared to the others. The lenses on the shelf are all still in focus on the 6S and the 10, but not on the 14. The glass jar is the focal point of all of these images, and on the 14 that means that something just behind it won't even be in focus anymore. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, it means that we get a nice natural subtle background blur without needing portrait mode. Bringing in the Pro Raw, the lamp isn't so saturated in colour anymore, and that gives you some scope to tweak the colour of it in post which is one of the reasons why you'd shoot in Pro Raw, as well as to get that higher detail and photo resolution. The ultra wide brings even more into the scene, but you can see how in this example, if you're shooting quite close to something, you do get quite a lot of distortion in the image. You can really see it here on the box in the bottom left. This is how both the two X's compare. They actually look pretty similar, and to be honest, there's not that much difference that I can see. The 14 crops into the main sensor to get a 2x zoom, so you still get that shallow depth of field, which is why the wall behind looks a little bit less detailed, it's just not in focus. And this is the 3x on the 14, it gets us right up close to the glass jar. It's well balanced and I really like how it captures the lights inside. They have a really nice saturated glow to them. So let's look at low light performance next, and this is where there's been a really big improvement in phone photography in recent years. The only lights on are the lights in the glass jar and the blue lamp, and the 6S is finding it really hard here. The image is noisy, there's not a lot of detail. The 10 does better, but it does seem to be struggling more with the blue light for some reason. It's very bright against the walls, but the image is more detailed overall. As you'd probably expect, the 14 does the best here. It has just about the widest aperture of the three phones on the main camera, so the sensor can gather even more light and there's barely any visible noise. It handles the blue light a lot better too. And this isn't even using night mode either, this is just a standard photo. The Pro Raw looks great as well, and again with less overall saturation for editing in post and a lot more detail with that higher pixel count. The Ultra Wide looks pretty good too, a little smooth in places with the noise reduction, but still a pretty decent low light photo. Now switching to the 2x zooms, things get a bit interesting on the 10. Because the main camera has a wider aperture, in low light the built-in camera app will instead use the main camera for the photo and crop into that 2x zoom. The 14 always crops in for the 2x, but here it's decided to take a 2 second night mode exposure as well. Looking at both, the 10 makes the camera and the lenses on the shelf look mostly silhouetted, it's really dark. The 14 looks brighter, but I'd say it's a bit too much so, it's lost some of that contrast from raising the black levels too much but you can at least see more clearly what's in the shot. Looking at the 3X, the 14 is also still using the main camera instead of the telephoto, and it is taking a night mode photo again, this time with a one second exposure. And because it is still using that main camera, it looks very similar to the 2X we just saw. Just to say as well, if you want to force which camera you're shooting with, then it's best to use a third party camera app that lets you choose. I'll link to my video in the description where I talk about the favourite camera apps that I like to shoot with if you're interested in seeing that. For low light video, here we're seeing the same kind of results. The 6S still struggles, it looks really dark and noisy, even though it's at half the frame rate, meaning each frame is getting more light. The 10 is also looking pretty noisy here too, but the 14 just handles it with ease. There's not a lot of noise, you can still see a lot of the detail, and the colours and contrast look fantastic, especially in HDR. I've been really impressed with the video on the last few iPhones, and the 14 is no exception. Lastly, I thought we'd look at the front camera and portrait mode. Now, there are some pretty notable changes with the selfie cameras. The 6S sits at just 5 megapixels with an f2.2 aperture, the 10 jumps up to 7 megapixels with the same 2.2 aperture, but it can do portrait mode with the true depth system in the notch. And the 14 Pro Max has a 12 megapixel front camera with an even wider f1.9 aperture, 
portrait mode, and autofocus for the first time on the front of an iPhone. Now, unfortunately, we're gonna to have to sit and look at my face for this. This is all three front cameras compared. It was very windy and bright, so sorry for the squinting. You can see how with each phone, the picture gets more detailed and clearer with the high resolutions. I will say though that the 14 still seems to just over sharpen too much. I kind of look like I've got some gray hairs in my beard and in my hair, which I don't think I do just yet. And the 14 looks cooler in color overall. I kind of prefer the warm look of the 6S and the 10 here with the sun on me. Although they both seem to be making me look more ginger than I am in real life. I'm not sure if it's the lower resolution, but I also look like I'm not even in focus on the 6S and the 10 with their fixed focus cameras. So the 14 has the edge here with the autofocus. I like the skin tone colors on the 10 the most here. My yellow coat is very yellow in person, but the 10 does oversaturate it just a bit. The 6S and the 14 are more accurate. And I do like the clarity of the 14. I just wish we had more control over that sharpening. It can be a bit much sometimes. And this is the portrait mode on the 10 and the 14. Again, these are handling the color and skin tones the same as without portrait mode on. I prefer the look of the 10 for that. And they're also doing the blurring slightly differently too. On the 10, my face is in focus and then it kind of rolls off across my hair and along my coat. Whereas on the 14, my entire self is still in focus, apart from some of my hair at the back. But they both do a great job of cutting me out from the background. On the 10 though, you can't change or set the amount of blur like you can on the 14. In fact, on the last few iPhones, you've been able to change the blur even after taking the photo, which is pretty cool. I think the blur is a little bit excessive on both here, but on the 14, I can change it from the f4.5 that it defaulted to, to something like f10, which I think looks a lot more natural and less fake looking. Overall, I think it's pretty clear to see how the cameras on the iPhone have been getting better and better over time. And it's easier to see that when you're sort of looking at phones that are multiple generations apart, like the 6S to the 10 and then the 14 Pro Max. But there are some things that those older phones are doing better, like their minimum focus distance on the main cameras, how they handle color in different lighting conditions. Sometimes I prefer the 10 and sometimes the 14 and how much post processing and sharpening the phones are doing. Since the iPhone 12, the phones have been getting a lot more aggressive with the sharpening, and I just wish that we had a bit more control over that, especially on phones that are marketed as being pro. The 14 can produce really bright and vibrant photos, which I guess Apple thinks that most people want. They want a photo that they can just share right away and not have to do any editing with. The 14 is my favorite overall. I especially like those 48 megapixel Pro Raw shots with all of that extra detail. But you know, I was still impressed by how well the 6S and the 10 did. As long as you give them a decent amount of light, they can take some pretty great photos. Let me know how you think they did in the comments below. And also, if you're using a phone that's like even older than a 6S, either an Android or an iPhone, then let me know below. I'm curious to know who has the oldest phone. I really enjoyed making this video. It was really fun to sort of look back. Let me know if you wanna see sort of more comparisons with these older phones. If you enjoyed it, you can hit the like button and let me know. And to see more tech videos from me, be sure to hit subscribe and the bell. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.